Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do something we haven't done for about a year. We're going to do a basic unboxing and overview of a watch. And this is a incredible value that I found at uh, Costco. I've been in the market for an ABC watch for a while now. Uh, ABC watch is a watch that has an altimeter, barometer, and compass on it. And so I was looking at the different G-Shock models and, and this and that, the Suunto, Suunto Core models. And I just didn't know if I wanted to drop $150, $200. So I was walking through Costco yesterday and I found these models for $79.87. So basically 80 bucks. And this is the Casio ProTrek uh, PRG330. And I was looking for something that wasn't quite as big as your typical G-Shock. And I'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison here in a second. Uh, this one has a black bezel to it. Let's go ahead and just run through all the different features that this ProTrek watch has to offer. And why you might want to consider this as like your daily wear watch. Um, it has tough solar power, so it is solar powered. Uh, 100 meters of water resistance, uh, low temperature resistant LCD, which is good if you're in a cold climate. It also has a digital compass, an altimeter, a barometer, thermometer, sunrise and sunset data, oral time, full auto LED light, four, four daily alarms, one snooze, stopwatch, and countdown timer. So basically it's gonna take care of a lot of those features that you might want in a different watch. Um, I'm gonna fiddle around with it here and just get it set, get it checked out, and we'll check the um, altitude and see if it's accurate. We'll check the temperature settings on it also and uh, we will go from there. But in the box, you get a nice little presentation box from Costco when you buy this model. Now, if you get this at, say, Walmart or a different place online, it might come in a different box, but Casio kind of markets them depending on where they sell them. Get a... Uh a, uh, a pillow for a really small person. That's pretty cool. And then you've got your manual in here too. Um, I've always had great luck with Casio watches and believe it or not, I'm actually kind of a watch geek, even though I don't feature them a whole lot on the channel, but uh, Casio always does a good job covering all the different features in uh, multiple languages. So warranty card. Okay. So real quick, before we get into the watch, let's take a look at the, uh, the warranty and see what they give us for it here. One year. Okay, so one year from the date of purchase, I'm definitely going to hold on to the uh, receipt. Now, this watch does get 4.6 out of 5 stars if you just do a basic Google search on it. And that's a combination of like Amazon reviews, Walmart reviews, a few different watch stores, and so on. And so uh, it does come fairly highly rated. And a few of the people that gave it the low ratings, the reason why they complained was because of a late delivery or it was the incorrect color from what they thought they were ordering and so on. So uh, it does have a, a really good rating to it, which does, you know, kind of have a bit of an impact when you want to purchase it. The width I was able to measure basically 45 47 millimeters and the uh, the thickness I haven't done that yet I'm gonna guess it's probably 15 maybe 20 millimeters we'll get that info for you so let's go and get it set and then we'll take a take a look at all the different features okay guys so I've been fiddling around with this for about a half hour the manual is very very simple to follow um, for every type of feature you can set on it they tell you which buttons to press again they have the button letters on them just size because this does matter to some people in terms of you know a daily wear watch we're looking at basically 40, about 46 millimeters across. And I think I measured, let's see here, 13 millimeters thick on the case, which is not bad at all. Just has a resin band, which you can get replacements if you want to. And uh, again, has a black bezel. It's almost kind of like a, almost like a, a bronze, which is really nice. Buttons are really easy to reach. You do have a sensor on this side over here. Um, and then just as a comparison to a standard G-Shock watch, this is about 20% larger when you measure it. Uh, this guy measured a couple millimeters thicker and uh, a couple millimeters wider. Now, I did not want the reverse display on this particular watch. I think this is kind of tactical and I love it, but in bright daylight, it can be a bit of a pain to read and I don't want to be staring down at my watch, say, when I'm driving or if I'm out in the woods or whatever and trying to figure out what everything says. So you can get this with the reverse display if you want to. And in case I had mentioned it before, the price was 80 bucks. But when you look around anywhere else on Walmart, they started at 130 for this model and they go up to 160. So do look around quite a bit before you decide to uh, to pick one up. Lots of adjustability in the band too. So real quick, all the different features. What do we have on each display? Well, to start off here, we've got the time, obviously. Let's get this in focus here. Uh, you've got the date up on the top and the seconds. Okay, I'll just run through the different modes. I haven't figured out what every single mode is, by the way. Just give you a heads up. I've only been filling with this for about a half hour. Uh, you got your date. Okay, uh, you can also record your high and low altitude for the last trek that you went on, which is pretty cool. You can also keep a log, so for whatever reason, if you're doing any kind of mountain travel or you need to know what altitude you're at for where you are, you have that option. You got your stopwatch, okay, you've got your timer, you can set the time on that also. Uh, you've got your four different alarms and your snooze alarm. You've got your world time mode where you can bounce between a bunch of different cities uh, all around the world. Sorry if the display was uh, out of focus there, guys. My bad. 
and back to the normal time mode. Okay, you can make full adjustments on it, which I really like about it. You're not stuck, say for like the temperature or the barometer and the altitude, you can override the factory default settings and set it to where you know you are, which is obviously very cool. Now, top right corner, if we press the button, we've got the compass, which gives you the degrees and the three little dots indicate the uh, magnetic north, okay? And you can calibrate it if you want to and move this around. I did a quick recalibration on it and it is, uh, correct, if you just hold it still, flat, horizontal, it just says uh, west, northwest, there it is, northwest, and that is the true north direction up there, the three little dots. So that's how the compass mode works. Then if we press it again, this is your barometric pressure reading, which is cool. It was one inch difference versus what my phone says. My phone currently says that we are at, in Lincoln, Nebraska, 29.78 inches. This is 29.80. And uh, the temperature in Lincoln right now is 70 degrees. This says 73.2, but I'm also holding on to it. And they say that the longer you can not touch the watch, the more accurate the temperature reading. They say you can let it, you know, they, they recommend letting it sit for up to 15 minutes to get an accurate temperature setting. And I don't know how realistic that is for somebody out in the field, but if you just sit it down for five minutes, you know, you're going to get an idea, especially if you're getting close to freezing and you have to worry about something like that. Okay, then you go down below right here. Oh, and also it does have kind of a, a little record of the barometer falling or rising and that's going to tell you uh, how the weather is going to change and the manual actually does a wonderful job explaining how the barometric pressure has an effect on the weather what you can expect it to do and also for the compass in case i didn't mention this um, you can also record your bearings of where you were at and it can also take you back to those bearings so if you happen to you want to mark a waypoint basically in a certain direction it will get you going back in that certain direction of degrees which is really nice too. So it's, it's gonna help you so you don't get lost and they explain how the compass works in the manual. Uh, altitude, my phone says I'm at 1225, the watch says 1280. I'm just gonna split the difference and basically <laughs> just leave it. I'm not even gonna touch it. Uh, basically Lincoln's altitude is 1200 feet, but it, you know, it can vary as you go from neighborhood to neighborhood. So I'm gonna leave it where it is. And uh, as you're trekking and walking, this little graph up here will show if you're increasing or decreasing in altitude. So you can just glance down and know if you're going up or down, if you need that information, uh, just from basically wearing the watch, okay? And then it takes us back to the basic form. Uh, again, you can go 12, 24 hours, you can go standard or metric if you want to. An incredible amount of flexibility. Now, if you go onto like Amazon, there are ABC watches on there and they run about 60 bucks. They're off-brand watches. A lot of complaints about them. Um, again, like I said, I'm, I'm a diehard Casio fan, a G-Shock fan, and I wanted something a little more conservative than this, although this is a very cool watch. This isn't exactly fun for, say, working under the hood of a car or working on a house. You get snagged on a lot of different environments. Something a little more slim, a little more compact. It's about 80% of the size of your of your typical G-Shock watch. Okay, so keep that in mind. And again, you've got your compass um, numbers on here for your, for your degrees and direction and so on, which is really cool. It does have a backlight. You can set the backlight duration. I mean, guys, I'm barely getting into all the features that this watch offers. I'm just going to start wearing it. We'll see how well it holds up. Uh, it has, it was released, I think, around 2018, so it is a fairly recent model, just so you know. So, I mean, it's not something that's been out for 20 years, although there's some great G-Shocks that have been, been around for quite a while. So, this is going to be my EDW, my everyday watch, and it's conservative enough that it doesn't look too flashy or blingy. I mean, you can wear it with just about anything. It's fairly neutral and uh, you can still use it in the outdoors and it is going to be rugged for you too. So again, like I said, 100 meters of water resistance, which I think is, is most of what most people are going to run into. So, uh, but anyway, that's it guys. This is my initial unboxing and initial impressions of the Casio Pro Trek. PG330. Um, if you see any variants in the model numbers, like a 320, 310, and so on, that's just the color of the bezel, but the watch is basically the same. So this is a triple sensor. Oh, this does have the version 3 engine running inside of it, which uses 90% less electricity than the Ven Gen 2 model. And it also uses, it also has, uh, it's, it's about, what do they say, 95% smaller is what it claims in the manual than the original Gen 1 sensor. So that's why these watches have gotten smaller. So Cassie's been able to evolve them and make them more efficient. So you're getting a decent piece of te technology, one of the newest versions or models, if that's important to you. And again, you got that solar charging. Uh, for solar charging, they do recommend at least a uh, half a day of sunlight once per month if possible. So if you can let it sit in the window, you know, during the morning or whatnot, 
uh, it will take care of yourself. And they say you do that to make sure all the sensors stay fully powered up and everything stays as accurate as possible. If you get into a low light situation for a couple months, you might start to run into some issues. So definitely try to keep it charged up at least, uh, I'd say probably six to eight hours of sunlight once per month if possible. Just regular daily use I think would probably get that for you too. So, and it does have a little power meter down below that tells you if you've got a low battery or not, which kind of gives you a heads up that it's coming. So lots of information guys, a tremendous value at 80 bucks over at Costco. You might want to call your Costco and see if they have it because this does not pop up online, it's in store only. But uh, otherwise, that's it, guys. So this is my initial impressions on this uh, triple sensor watch. We're going to wear it around and see how it works. But uh, all right, guys, so make sure you like and subscribe. Guys, I want you all to have fun. Be safe. Don't get lost. <laughs> and as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys. Have a good one. Uh, if you have questions about this watch, go ahead and ask them down below. I will try my best to answer them and see if I can find the info for you. All right? Okay, guys, take care. Have fun. Be safe. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye.